Okay, fantastic. All right, welcome back, everybody. You are watching the Premier League Season 3. This is Fnatic Raid Call on the dire side, up against Absolute Legends on the Radiant. Now, if memory serves me correctly, currently Fnatic are sitting on five wins out of seven games. Absolute Legends are sitting on five wins out of eight games. So they're looking to try and uh, stay on top here. Actually, they, they and I believe Dignitas are sitting all tied up in second place. I think also with Virtus Pro now. Sitting tied up in second place with five wins apiece. But right now we do have the Undying being first banned there by Absolute Legends. Now the question is, what are Fnatic going to pick up here on ban? Because I've got to say, I love casting Fnatic games because they have really, they often have very unconventional picks and bans because we've seen them do stuff like Jungle uh, Bounty Hunter and as well as just go ahead and go, you know what, five let's bring out a Kunker. And pretty much they just view him. It's not, they're not really going for the whole pub crit build. They're mostly he's using him just as a full-on nuker. And he's just spamming torrents and ships everywhere, just trying to initiate from a long range. Sure, he'll miss a lot of them. But every now and then when you land those nice big hits, they're complete and utter fight changes. However, continuing on for the bands here, we do have the Darks here. First banned by Fnatic, so no surprises there. I'm just wondering if we'll see Batrider as well as Linnea banned out. They are two very, very common bands at this current point in time. Also, Sven and Wisp have really been uh, sort of managing to raise their way up in terms of competitive awareness. A lot of teams are banning them out, although I don't think we'll see a Wisp ban this match just because I don't think either of these teams are too worried about it. Absolute Legends, they might use it if they want to go for a CK Wisp combo, which is a possibility. However, that said... They do have the first pick, so they could try and snap it up. On the other hand, I haven't really seen Fnatic use a whole lot of Wisp, so I don't think they'll bother with it. But we do see the Batrider band out, and just wondering if we'll see the Templar Assassin, of course. He's definitely a very, very mean hero at the moment. Ten seconds remaining. Did I just wake up? I've been awake for a couple of hours now. Mr. Happy Face, I've been awake for a couple of hours. Hopefully I don't sound too tired. It is currently 7 a.m. in the morning on the eastern coast of Australia. Looks like Fnatic are going to take their time here with their second band. Going to burn it. There. Oh, wait a minute. That's for Sudo. I will just double check that he's not having issues. If he's having serious problems, we may have to remake it for him. Anyway, though. We do have the Rubik Band. Now this is, uh, he was quite common as a band for a little while, and then sort of dropped up. Uh, he was very common for like a month and a half after the TI2, but has become less and less popular since the uh, more recent buffs. Bounty Hunter, though, the first pick there for Fnatic. They're going to go for a very gank-heavy lineup as well as a very gank-heavy strategy. They also go with Jakiro. Nice, safe pick. Absolute Legends, though, with the Magnus there, and we've seen exactly how crazy good Magnus can be as a setup there, and it just comes down to teams just getting a little bit too close, and I believe, if memory says me correctly, we casted this the other night, it was AL causing all sorts of havoc there with that Magnus pick, and that was up against, who was that up, that was up against Meet Your Makers, but Enigma being picked up by Absolute Legends, oh wow, this is going to sting, a whole lot of cleave while you cleave there with Sven, and of course Enigma, well if you can't get a vacuum, why not just get Magnus ult? Suck them in with that big ass stun and then just have Enigma follow up with a big black hole. And of course, if you get Sven in there with the crits, that is going to cause an absolute mess. But you know what? That's a perfect scenario. And the question is whether or not you will get that, especially if your team managed to spread out a little bit better than MYM were managing. MYM were getting baited into some pretty bad fights. Fnatic, on the other hand, though, they do not have the same team fight potential that AL have just now. But we'll see where they decide to go with this. Five seconds remaining. Time. Now the third pick here for Fnatic before we go into this second Shadow phase, and they pick up the Shadow Fiend. Now this is uh, an interesting choice. Honestly wasn't expecting the Shadow Fiend, and I think it's a little bit vulnerable. I feel this Shadow Fiend pick may be somewhat vulnerable to the Enigma Sven of It's just a lot of gank heavy firepower there, and a lot of really nasty spells, and two Shadow superior magic stuns. Even if B uh, Shadow Fiend does his normal BKB into Manta and gets the early magic immunity, that's not really going to help him a whole lot against Magnus and Enigma, just pinning him down, and then Sven just tearing through his health, because he's not that tanky. So that worries me a little bit. At the very least, though, they do have some negative armor off the bat there with Bounty Hunter and Shadow Fiend. That will help deal with Sven's war cry, but at the same time, I am very, very worried about that. We see a Templar Assassin band out. Now, two reasons they might ban that. One, Templar Assassin is just all around a very painful hero to have to deal with. Secondly, secondly, if they're planning to send Shadow Fiend mid, they do not want a Templar Assassin mid because Templar Assassin will completely and utterly decimate Shadow Fiend. There is no contest there. 
a well played Templar assassin is more than a match for a Shadow Fiend. He just really just cannot stand up against it. All he, his biggest asset up his sleeve, of course, is burst damage, and Templar assassin eats up and laughs off burst damage all day long. But we do have the Night Stalker band out as well. I suppose it's just because, of course, the Night Stalker Bounty Hunter has been a bit more of a common combination as of late, and of course the Chinese are making it fairly popular now. And it is definitely quite scary to see Night Stalker zoom around and get that extra damage amp off the track, as well as just getting the speed mostly off the track, so it makes him uh -huh. so hard to catch. And of course, the gold amplification as well. Radiant very, very nasty back. stuff. However, however, we do also have a Keeper of the Light band out, which I think is definitely a safe band, considering they have a Sven. <sighs> Having a keeper light running around causes issue. Then we go. We also have a faceless void being banned out. I think, uh, I believe AL are a little bit wary of Era's faceless void. Which is fair enough. That would have made them a. I don't know if they honestly would have gone for a faceless void just because. Well, I suppose Shadow Fiend, if you can play him correct, he can sort of gank. I mean, he's got the early nukes. Doesn't have to disable. So if he wants to go and just get active and gank early, but still, I think against what AL have with a very powerful early mid game team fight potential, I really think it would be questionable to then pick up the Void on top of the Shadow Fiend there, but we'll see what they decide to go with. Wisp, though, the final ban here, Fnatic, I guess, just covering the base, saying, alright, well, we know Sven's pretty crazy already, let's make sure he can't combo that up with the Wisp. The Force multiplier there from the Wisp is more than enough to bring them down. Just the fact that it will also make very... It makes farming very hard when you've always got to, you know, be very wary of Wisp and Sven, or even Magnus teleporting in behind you and causing all sorts of hell from the rear. Ten seconds remaining. But now the second picking phase. The bands are out of the way. Now Absolute Legends are probably looking for some kind of hard support. Magnus probably going to be... There we go. Lestrak most likely to be that support. Enigma going to possibly soft support. Magnus might chip in a bit as well, but we'll see what he goes for. He could actually be suicide landing, or it could be Enigma. We will find out. I think Sven and Lestrak are likely to roll together, which leads me to believe Absolute Legends are likely to be looking for a solo mid. We'll see where they go, though. Fnatic, on the other hand, they have their hard support sorted out. They have their suicide lane. Probably their solo mid. I feel it's probably their solo mid just because Templar Assassin is banned out. We'll see if, whether or not Hanny will be playing that. But, continuing on, oh, oh, actually, I should also mention that uh, Jake out at the top there is, in fact, Hanny, if some people are confused. Actually, speaking of which, by the way, Fnatic, they do uh, leave all the banning to Hanny, who, in fact, mutes his, uh, by his own admission, mutes his team members while he bans. Whether or not he can do that, because these teams are playing at LAN, uh, they're all getting uh, pumped up for Dreamhack, I guess. But, however, whether or not he can do that right now, I don't know. Maybe he's asking all bugger off while he does the picks. That said, though, these teams have met once in the last month, if memory serves me correctly, played in the Star Ladder series, and I believe Absolute Legends were the victors in that match. That said, the Gosu bet level is fairly even. I think it's like 40, 45-55% roughly between the two teams. It's very, very tight. Last I checked earlier this morning. However, continuing on, we're going down the uh, pick time here, reserve time, down to 20 seconds. Meanwhile, Absolute Legends have been quite comfortable. They've gone for, well, they haven't burned any of their reserve time just yet. And it's all down to been it's all been down to Fnatic chewing through this time. They're not sure where to go, but they are looking possibly for a soft support. Probably got this old mid, probably some kind of primary farmer as well. And they pick up a vengeful spirit. Lots and lots of negative armor. Not that I blame this. Really does help cut down Sven's durability. Also, vengeful spirit, fantastic counter to Enigma. Even if he gets that BKB, as long as vengeful spirit is hanging back, you never have to worry about that black hole, just because she can swap through that BKB. Absolutely fantastic stuff. That said, though, Magnus done with Sven and Lashrak follow-up is still pretty scary, so they need to watch out for that, but at the very least, some BKBs will help them out quite a bit. But Ventral Spirit, that's the support hero. I mean, we saw her for so long. She was really, really popular, and then once uh, the rise of Crystal, well, Crystal Man became more popular, and then we, of course, had Rubik and Venomance. So Venomance, of course, was really popular for ages as well, but then Rubik and, more importantly, Chikiro came along, and then just Shadow Demon as well. Ventral Spirit just sort of went down the list, just sort of, you know, became less and less useful. And, of course, the other thing that uh, was before, uh, happened before was also the Brewmaster showed up. Brewmaster used to be a really good counter to Enigma as well because the same deal was if he'd used Primal Split, Enigma couldn't Black Hole because the Black Hole didn't used to actually grab up the Brewmaster's Primal Split Pandas. But uh, after he came out, we saw a bit less of the Ventral Spirit. That said, she's still a good hero, I believe. And we'll see how she does this match. But definitely really good for positioning and kiting. In fact, the fact that she's there, I think, is really nice just for the counter value there to the Enigma, because that's probably the biggest thing they're going to worry about, the Magnus and the follow-up there from the Enigma really going to scare them. However, that said, we do have Queen of Pain also being the final pick there, so that's probably going to be their solo mid. I get the feeling Enigma Jungle, Magnus Suicide Solace, Sven Lashrak in the safe lane, Queen of Pain mid. However, Nyx Assassin being picked up, this might actually be a Nyx mid. This could be an interesting line. We might actually see Shadow Fiend, Jakira, and Ventral Spirit working together. Those two uh, supports looking after the Shadow Fiend and just trying to defensively tri-lane him. 
Probably going to you know, focus most on pulling and ganking. Bounty Hunter, of course, Suicide, and maybe a Nyx mid. Or it could be a dual mid even. We'll see what they've got up their sleeve here, but definitely a very different choice. They have heroes. I was not expecting that at all. Anyway, so it looks like... Ooh, it depends what Aero's going to go. Hanny will be taking... I think Hanny's going to be mid there. He's picking up the Nyx Assassin. Aero's taking the Shadow Fiend, so I think they'll put Aero on the safe lane. But speaking of Absolute Legends, let's call out the players here, what they've got for the heroes. Absolute Legends have decided to go with Come With Me playing uh, Queen of Pain, Sony on the Sven, Freezer playing Enigma, Mania playing Lashrak, and Sexy Bambo on the Magnus. Uh, that actually might be a solo mid Magnetor. Sexy Bambo, they've been experimenting with uh, Bambo as their solo mid player. We'll see. However, for the dire side, we have got Hanny playing Nyx Assassin, Error on the Shadow Fiend, No Tail on the Ventral Spirit, Trixie playing Bounty Hunter, No Tail playing the Ventral Spirit, uh, shoot, and uh, Fly playing the Jakiro there. We go Trixie taking the Suicide Soul, that's his normal place. There we go, Hanny taking the mid, gonna be doing a bit of an eco build here, going for that fast bottle. I'm just gonna quickly check on the to see if he's uh, crashing or not. Hopefully he's managed to get back in. It looks like the teams are fairly well spread out. Nobody's really heading anywhere in particular that might result in a clash. They're just checking runes, that sort of business. Apparently they're disappointed with Aaron not going mid. I think Bambo wanted to take him on mid. In fact, what has Bambo opened up with? Should actually, actually, Bambo might be focusing on pulling here. This looks like Come With Me will be taking the solo mid here. Frieza taking the suicide lane there with the Enigma, that's his usual role. The battle begins. And we will have Sony being backed up by Mania. No real surprise there, but I get the feeling Magnus will be... Did he chop down these trees? No, he did not. Okay, I'm actually not dead sure what Bambo's up to then, we'll see. What he's got in plan. A haste room being picked up though by Notel. Haste! So it looks like Bambo just wanted to check the top room to see what there was. And it looks like he will be pulling, so he's probably just going to go and charge down these creeps as it looks like, oh fly, getting down the counter ward now, Bambo probably guessing what's up now. So here a stun get tossed out, Trixie already copying a stun in the face, looks like he was coming down here to try and jack the creep, but getting spotted up though by this counter ward here, being forced to potion up already. The block is there, this is definitely going to frustrate main in fact no, he's managed to get a counter ward already, so he's probably going to toss that, I believe you could stick it up here without blocking the creep camp. There we go, okay, he's managed to find it there, but he's got to skewer his way through these trees. Or not, there we go, no, he's just going to cut his way through with an early tango there. Meanwhile, it will be a dual mid. We're going to have Hanny backed up by Fly. And they should be able to handle this Queen of Pain. And I believe we talked to Hanny about playing the Nyx Assassin. And basically, the late game, he's really just going to abuse this mana burn like crazy. And he's going to spam it on Queen of Pain, as well as the Nyx. Because it's really, it really, really stings late game against heroes that tend to bulk up on the intelligence factor. Now, Aero's going to be careful, doesn't want to take too many hits here from the Idolons once they hit level 2, because they will really, really sting. On the other hand, though, Freezer has to be careful about feeding him low-level Idolons just because of the free souls uh, business. But we see Hanny has already started spamming that mana burn, causing trouble for Queen of Pain. This is obviously not much fun for her. In fact, she's still working towards that bottle. Hanny should have his in a couple of last hits. In fact, one or two last hits, and he'll have this. Although he's struggling a little bit there. Fortunately, Jakira doesn't quite have the range to continue harassing Queen of Pain when she gets into this position, just because if he comes up to try and harass her, the creep wave instantly jumps on him, and that causes a fair bit of damage. Meanwhile, though, we have Trixie trying to jack some of the creep here, trying to avoid having them denied. In fact, actually, just going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mania for a short while. Meanwhile, they have managed to uh, counter ward that, but it looks like it's possibly blocked anyway by that same ward. And this will definitely frustrate Sexy Bambo quite a bit. Now that he's got nowhere really far, he might actually might actually have to trade. Let Sexy Bambo get his hands on this pool camp here and utilize that. If this creep camp doesn't spawn, we'll check the three minute mark and check on it just then. My bad. I forgot that the in-game spectator sound doesn't work when we restart. Okay then, so the mic should be working now. If you 
still can't... Oh, well, if it's still not working now in game, you can hear me in stream still, then let me know and I'll give it another shot, but it should be working right now. There we go. Come with me. I'm going to take a bit of harassment there. Fly, I'm going to trade hits with him. Now, there we go. Hanny has picked up that mana burn... Uh, has picked up that bottle, and it's really... We're going to see Queen of Pain perpetually without any mana here. And if they can get a good start off, in fact, because she's going to have her escape mechanism gone because of this. This is actually... Like, she has to be really careful. If Nyx gets up a stun to mana burn, they could lock her down there with the ice path. There's definitely something Radiant for her to watch out to. Trixie, though, has opened up with that poor man's shield. It's not doing too well with it, though. The 5 and 1, definitely being harassed quite hard there by Mania. Mania managing to keep him at bay there as we get the first blood there. They dive in and pick off the Queen of Pain. There we go. Courier, though, not taking any hits. I thought it was up to Courier for a second there. As Shadowfiend also picks up a kill on the top lane. It looks like Fnatic are off to a good start here. A sexy Bambo still struggling to pull any... He's still level one. I mean, you know, he has managed to pull finally, but hasn't picked up any experience from it just yet. Nick's finding himself an invisibility rune. Queen of Bane going to head back up to the mid. She's sitting on 10 and 5 at the moment. It's Bounty Hunter now. Just going to harass Sexy Bambo. Finding him at level 1. He's got a level... No, it's only a level 1 shuriken, but he might be able to run him down regardless. We'll see if he can. As Magnus, though, does have skewer up. and see the counter-attack. I mean, that's what he was waiting for. Trixie, though, just fades back in Winviz and will walk away from this, but it looks like... Bambo really not having a fun time here. And this is also, this is wasting time for Queen of Pain. Even though it didn't look like much, the fact she had to walk away there and just spend time not laying. She's already giving away precious experience. And there we go, the stun out again. Here comes the Ice Path. Trixie's there as well. Going to toss in a Shuriken. She jumps away, but it might not be fast enough. Bottles up, though. It looks like they are going to back up here. Courier again coming into danger. Nyx Assassin, though. Just going to heal up there with his bottle and then make another run on Queen of Pain. And she's, and she's ripe again for that mana burn. Going for that top 4 minute rune, it's not there, as you know, it might be rolling top for a gank, has picked up that invis. It looks like he's going to take another run there on the Enigma, Enigma is definitely vulnerable right now, about to lose his Eidolons. And no town now, keeping an eye on him at Fnatic, also going to bring in Error here, here comes the chain stun, they throw out the Impale, and an easy kill, feeding Error, another kill here. Finally Bambo, able to pull this camp. Meanwhile though, we've got to keep in mind that Sven is last hitting at a decent pace here. Has picked up his power treads already, so we see Trixie rolls back to the bottom lane. But Sven up to 33 and 11. Got to remember though, Sven is going to get fairly fat in that big game, and that's where Mania, oh, that's where AL are really going to have a good shot here. Though Queen of Pain now, she's lost to Escape Mech, it's been burned off. And again, another kill, this dual mid completely drilling her. And it looks like Absolute Legends may have underestimated this Nyx Assassin pick. Meanwhile though, a bit of a dive on the bottom lane as well. They bring down the Bounty Hunter. Shadowfiend, though, picking up a Sage's Dyer's Mask. I'm not sure where he's going with that just yet. We'll see. That's Dyer's an interesting deviation. It's not a regular early item that Shadow... Unless he's trying to pick up... Okay, no, he's decided just to go for an early Basilius. Fair enough, then. Has picked up a Ring of Regen as well. Meanwhile, it looks like Six Bambo just going to be doing a bit of pulling. Queen of Pain, though, finds herself Radiant's at Regen. Whether or not she'll be able to do anything is another Dyer's question at all. Looks like she might try and make a run on the top lane. Has she picked up? No, still only level 5. In fact, out-leveled by Era. I don't think she can actually go for this. Just going to try and drag the creep off the tower. So I'm just going to bring up the gold shard here. Has swung back Radiant's in favor of the Radiant at the moment. Although well, this comes down to the fact that they are tapping more sources of income right now. The experience is in favor of the die. Not by too much just yet, but it may start snowballing out of control. Come with me, doing what he can to slow down this push here on the top tower. But it looks like Era is going to cause enough damage to bring it down in, a fair, in maybe about the next minute or so, especially it seems like Enigma's given up on that lane. In fact, they might be looking for a bit of a gank here on Hanny. Now, Enigma's still trying to get his soul ring. This is definitely going to make jungling stuff. He's going to go and try and turn around jungle. Right now, without the soul ring, we see the stun go down there. Stun gets tossed out. The impale there on Freezer also copying the carapace stun. Here comes Nojo. This should be a lock. And Nyx Assassin picks it up nice and easy. And now it looks like they are going to try and skim off there with the idol. It's not going to happen, though. Only a little bit too quick for their pace there, as it looks like the bottom tower, though, being brought down by the Radiant side. It's only going to get that kill. It looks like he's going for this early mask man slot. Stormbolt gets tossed out there on Trixie. He tries to fade into Invis. Not quite quick enough, though. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain trading some hits there with Error. She still has that regen up her sleeve, so she's feeling comfortable. Looking to hit that level 6, maybe. Just harass him a bit and then jump. Yeah, she's picked up the ult at level 6. Might be going for a shot here once she gets her Shadow Strike back up. We'll see in a moment. Meanwhile, though, we do have the Twin Headed Dragon. The gank is coming in from behind. Shadowfin gets the kill. 
And looks like they've seen there. They've noticed they've been seen by Mania. They decide not to go through with it. Queen of Pain obviously just able to jump into the trees if she really, really wants to. Meanwhile, Magnus still pulling and stacking. In fact, I think he's just trying to. I think he's just trying to shockwave this down. Now he's given up on that pull. He's just shockwaving his way through it. Absolute Legends is no longer an Australian team. After the International 3, they switched over to a European-based team. Um, the, the old Absolute Legends team now plays under the tag Natural 9. We see double damage being found. Bottom Maroon, they're going to wait for Nyx to come along and grab that. It looks like Nyx is on his way. Vendetta has been used. It looks like Mania has managed to find the high ground ward here, and he's going to get rid of it. Well, this courier might actually walk... Oh, no, it doesn't look like he's going to get sniped. Although, on the, speaking of snipe, though, Mania, a very easy kill for them. And now they're going to maybe try and chase down... Oh, it's not going to happen. That courier's hit at speed. It should be able to get away. Meanwhile, we see Notal building some... Probably going to be building the drums for his team. And they do the counter-warding counter, counter warding business there. And they'll probably want to pick that off as well, just to make things safer there for Nick's assassin. And, of course, more dangerous for Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain going to notice that counter ward and pick it off before they can. Bambo on the other hand, still trying to shockwave down that camp. Meanwhile though, double damage room being picked up by Nyx Assassin. Error currently sitting on 2,000 gold in the bank. We'll see what he goes for first. He's doing a bit of the boot switching there. Just trying to regen matters. Looks like the gank is on on bottom now. Sony realizes... Oh, gets swapped back into the trees. Double stun there. They're stacking the stun somewhat unnecessary. Doesn't matter though. They pick up an easy kill. And are probably going to put the pressure on this bottom tower as well. No levels in liquid fire. Shakira has just gone straight for Ice Path and Dual Breath. Max ganking power right now. I mean, this is definitely a nasty gank. I mean, if you think stuff like Night Stalker is really mean, of course, you throw in a Nyx Assassin. He loves his ganking too. And of course, Vengeful Spirit, well known for her roaming capabilities as well. Seems like this lineup is working quite nice. And of course, the negative armor. Always a beautiful combination there in terms of boosting early damage when heroes really don't have very much to start with, especially stuff like Latrak, all the four armor there. Poor old Sven. He's got eight at the moment. And of course, he's using that war cry to boost him up, but they can quite easily drop him down to zero or lower in terms of um, more counter wards being thrown up by the die side, just getting this map control, making sure things are really, really scary for them to farm. Now, the teleport to mid looks like they're going to make a run on. No, oh, actually, they're going for Roshan. And do we have. Yeah, there we go. We have Presence of the Dark Lords. They've got that negative armor, of course. Wave of Terror as well. See Roshan dropping down to the negative levels. And this is going to help them tear through it fairly easily, though Nyx might need to rotate that a few times there. They don't have any. Regeneration, so hopefully they can get this in one go. Besides that rune there, you see trade oh, changing once again. And right now, absolute legend way with that lineup, you wouldn't really expect around about a 10 11 minute Roshan attempt. But it's definitely doable just because of this negative armor. And all they're going to do is just trade it. I mean, I've even seen a level 1 Roshan run using the negative armor there from Prince of the Dark Lord. And now it looks like they are going to suck back the bounty hunter there and shockwave him down. And Absolute Legends managed to post a kill on the board once again. Only 2 to 7 at the moment. But now Nyx, he's thinking about it. No, no Vendetta anymore. Wears off there. Still only level 1, unfortunately. This has been the downside of uh, dual landing the mid, of course, is the lower level. He's only level 6 at 11 minutes in. Where normally your solo mid will hit level 6 around about the 6 minute mark. Is Trixie unhappy about that ult there from Radiant's Magnus, dragging him back into that shockwave. Meanwhile, though, Enigma still farming. We've got to keep in mind, though, that said, the ganking power that Fnatic is putting Dyer's out right now, if Absolute Legends can force some nasty teamfights in mid-game, at the same time, they have a lot of potential. Queen of Pain, Magnus, Lashrak, Sven, lots of really, really painful AoE. Of course, we do have an Enigma, but his big AoE is obviously largely countered by the swap there from Ventral Spirit. So as long as she's hanging back in these big team fights, they will not need to worry too much about the Black Hole. I see Ventral Spirit also pick up an early Medallion of Courage. This is a build I've not seen in a long, long time. I mean, this is... I mean, even with Ventral Spirit, it's not something I've seen from her, from her in ages. But picking up that medallion, that gives out so... You see there, she's doing the level 1 magic missile as well. And I'm going to just bring this up. This is something that was really common for ages. Now, this came, this is going back to when the stun was a flat 1.7 seconds stun. And the point of leaving at level 1 was to keep the cost cheaper. And they're not looking for damage or time of the stun because it was a, you know... It was a flat time of the stun. Now, obviously, it scales now 1.45 to 1.75. But that's a very minuscule amount of additional time. So it looks like they're not too worried about it. But that's it. After the change was made to scale the stun time, a lot of teams just started maxing Magic Missile anyway. They said, all right, screw it. We might as well just get the extra damage now as well, along with the extra time. But 
Fnatic here, they're doing a much older build where they go for the level 1 stun. It's just a setup. So it's going to set up there for the impale and then the ice path and dual breath. That's all that they want it for. They're not worried about the damage. It's just to stop them for a second. And what they're interested in here is the negative armor from Wave of Terror. And this is, I think, mostly to help deal with spend. You get negative 5 there from Wave of Terror and then you get negative 6 from Medallion of Courage. That's negative 11. And then you throw on the track as well, plus presence of a Dark Lord. You could really, really start affecting a lot of heroes and dishing out a ton of extra damage. Definitely something that they will need to, uh, absolute legends will need to watch out for, but definitely a very old school build there. I saw, I think I saw Sven's Mask of Madness completed. Yes, it is indeed completed. Shadow Fiend now goes for the Blink first again. Fnatic with the old school builds. Blink first, Shadow Fiend. I mean, Shadow Fiend when he gets played, you see uh, teams like, uh, well, players like Fog Flame, he'll go straight for that BKB Manta style. Pretty much without. Without change, but uh, in this case, Shadow Fiend going for the blink early, and he's going for that early game firepower. Just some mobility and planting his razors as well as that uh, wreck of souls. Not a very common build anymore at all. See a 5k advantage in gold now, currently to the dire side, a 2.5k experience lead as well. Meanwhile, come with me, still farming that mid lane, and we see the last hits at the moment. Shadow Fiend 87 and 14. Looks like Fnatic are looking to put this pressure on the bottom lane. Now, where has Nyx gone off to? Nyx is on his way back now, has picked his Arcanes as well. Now, these guys need to be careful, of course. Magnus could quite easily skewer in and set up a very big ulti for Enigma. So they still will need to avoid that and see how Notel is hanging back. It's definitely what they need to make sure. Notel has to keep himself out of the fight, stay spaced out, or maybe he won't bother. I suppose the Enigma, they can see Enigma top, so it's not a big worry for them right now, but definitely when they go into these team fights and Enigma is not visible, they need to keep no tail spaced out. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Come with me though, he's getting a bit more cash out, has picked up his power treads, another regeneration rune bottle up as well, we'll bring up the gold for a minute there, see 3.40 for Queen of Pain, she's doing okay despite a fairly hairy start. We also have a flat 500 though, this is definitely the telling thing, Span sitting on 300, although he's looking to increase this now, of course, nice big stack there, and of course, the Mask of Mantis cleave through this, but of course, he is only at 330, well, she's picking up 330 now as well, but of course, it's not really much to compare to Shadow Fiend at the moment, a flat 500 gold per minute, and the fact that he can farm this deep with, uh, by himself without fear is definitely not a good sign, he does have the Aegis, of course, definitely helpful. See, come with me though, gonna jump up there, goes for the scream, however, a blink, an early blink there on Nyx Assassin. And it looks like Hanny is going for the mobility build as well, not bothering the dagger, this is in fact what we've seen him do before, just flat out mobility, goes for the blink dagger and then the four staff, and then I think it was Yules after that as well. So we'll see if he does the four staff next, might actually pick up a magic wand in a minute, just because of course it's always a really nice little item to buy up. Now Bounty Hunter's gone for the, oh, wow, all but Venom, so again, unconventional builds here from... Fnatic, they do do things a little bit differently. Oh, but Venom, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's stacked that extra slow with the note. It makes it a little bit easier. And of course, it's a cheap buy. Just not that a common choice, though. But then, of course, Bounty Hunter has had a pretty decent start this game. And it looks like he's just going to go for the BKB. Often we see drums, early drums on Bounty Hunter instead. It looks like he's going to switch his build around, go for the Orb of Venom over the drums. But it looks like BKB is next on the menu. Or possibly, I mean, possibly... Possibly that could be a Heaven's Halber to try and help shut down Spin. I mean, that's another option. Although I get the feeling it's most likely to be a BKB just because, of course, you don't want to really get chain stunned there by Lashrak and Sven stun and obviously all the big nukes there from Queen of Pain. So BKB would make a lot more sense to me, but not just scanning anything. I mean, we're seeing so many different things right now from Fnatic, so it could be anything. And with me now, going to jump up here, just do a little bit of counter warning. In fact, just get trolled by the uphill miss, actually. It's like they're going to jump in, though. Stun goes out, going to catch her as well. There's the drain. Mass nukes as well. Queen of Pain going to pay with that. Pay for that with her life. And the mobility right now from the rail, from the dire side, it seems to be eclipsing the radiant at the moment. Shadowfin now still working towards that BKB. Does have the hammer now as well. And we see Jakira also working on the mech, although Bambo is looking to get in behind me here and then charge out for the ult there. But he has to, be, of course, be wary of them just using the high ground to spot him. I think he's changed his mind, in fact. And of course, the one thing they could do is use high ground spot and then just swap him up the hill. But it looks like Absolute Legends are willing to sacrifice this tier 2 tower. They're that worried of Fnatic's fight at the moment. So you see they found a ward there. We'll get picked off. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And it looks like Fnatic have decided to back up here. 
See, Era has gone to Gone Farm. The bottom lane, just clean this up. And there we go. BKB is completed. It will be brought out quite shortly. That's definitely going to give him some more staying power against Absolute Legends lineup. Although, that said, still has to watch out for obviously the Magnus and the. Uh, Magnus Salt and then the Enigma Roll. If he still gets caught in that with the Sven cleaving away, that's going to be quite painful regardless. See the jungle though. Bambo's still trying to farm up there. I'm seeing what Bambo's farm is. 2... 182. That's... Yeah. That, that start there, that counter there with that war, that really sucked. The fact that his counter would have also messed up his own pull, that really was quite painful for him. A Shadow Fiend, possibly overextending a little bit. Of course, he can, or she know he can't really. There's two super magic stuns there. As there, I might want to blink into jungle and just get the hell out. Just need to be careful if he tries to jump into this. I think he's possibly asking for people to shop and help him kill them. Looks like he's... Alright, night time now. He might actually just... Okay, no, he's willing to go for this. Get stunned there as well. Gonna try and go for this by the looks of things. Aaron now gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Freezer. However, two more Radiant Heroes are coming. Aaron, not sure. Gets hit by the black hole here. We're gonna have Bambo chain the stun the second, though. Not taking that much damage. Here we go. Stun gonna get chained there. Stopping the Requiem. Gonna go for the Requiem in a second. Can he get it up? No, change his mind. Gonna throw out another Razor. Gets killed in the end. And it looks like he really overestimated his staying bound. That's what I'm worried about. If he gets caught in those chain severe magic stunts, even with the BKB up, he's still definitely vulnerable. Meanwhile, though, Queen of Pain will get cleaned up in the top lane. Just the chain stunts here are too much for her, and she is a little bit squishy, especially sitting on those intelligence power treads. She is trying to build an early BKB, I think. She's just realized she's being taken out too easily, although they pick off the Enigma with Trixie. Trixie also working his way towards the BKB. Almost has it, in fact. Needs just a couple more, one more creep hit there. Or even this top tower, which Fnatic are going to grab in just a moment. There we go. Trixie will have his BKB as well. Now, gold per minute at the moment. Oh, gold advantage at the moment. 5k plus there for the dire side. Experience wise, still around about the th hovering just below the 3k mark as well. Invis Rune found though. And he's going to grab that up. He has 1600 on the bank. We'll see if he goes for the 4 staff next. I'm kind of expecting it. Mania, oh, see, feeling a little pobo. He has picked up the brace. I'm probably going to build that drums in a minute. Or just stack a couple of braces. Another very common option there for the Lashrax when they play soft support or hard support. Now it looks like they might just make another run at Roshan in a minute, which I mean, that should be alright because, of course, Enigma currently doesn't have that blink. Neither does the Magnus. So it should be alright for them to try and do Roshan. I think they're just looking to get the counter ward down first, get rid of Vision. As Ducey Jakura has got a counter ward on him currently speaking. In fact, Nyx even has a gem. Never mind then. Doesn't even need to use that counter ward. So they've gotten rid of the vision on the Roshan pit. They could try and make a run at it if they wanted to. This is Mech. We have the item chart. There's a here. Sven ulting up. Looks like... Oh, wow. Okay, he's just trying to clean up creep at the moment. Let's see if he can get these ancients. He gets some cash rolling. He has managed to pick up a little bit. He's almost at 400 gold per minute. Error, on the other hand, has slipped down to 490. Yes, this is the best of three, and this is game number one. And here we go. Fnatic going to go for their second Roshan run. And there's that medallion. Just going to help them... Negative arm. It's going to help them cleave through Roshan's health. Let's see what he's sitting on now. Negative 12. Making him very, very easy kill. Now, Trixie's sitting in the top lane here. Do they have any detection? They do have dust on them. That should... That'll probably allow them to bring down... Actually, no. Trixie's probably just going to hit his BKB and run for it. He Roshan should be fine. Has fallen to the Roshan taken out, though. Looks like Sexy Bambo also headed to the top lane as well. Just waiting for that third hero to show up, and then they might make a run on Trixie. Oh, uh, in fact, they're going to go with all five. They're going to try and make a push of it while they're at it. Now, Enigma Black Hole still 40 seconds out. Sven's all 30 seconds out. And Trixie's backing up here. I don't think he spotted them just... Oh, no. He spotted them. Lots of pinging. They know some troubles there. I think they might have spotted him with... This pass with that ward heading to the top lane. That might have really set off the alarm bells there. Queen of Pain, though, going to teleport back. Looks like they're worried about the mid lane being pushed. There is nothing there, though, at the moment. Now the gank sweeping through the dire jungle. Got Hanny again. Oh, actually, no, he's going to break his... Uh, still only a level 1 Vendetta. See, now Hanny going to move out. And pops a carapace in time. That throws out the Impale and an easy kill again. Hanny's reaction time. They're absolutely beautiful. Copping Enigma with a carapace stun on the first proc there of Malthus. Knew it was coming. Threw it down. Now, Trixie 
With his BKB, another 1500 gold. He might actually even try and take on Sexy Bambo. I mean, Bambo has nothing at the moment. He could even try and take him out here. There we go. There's the slow of the track as well. Skewer away. You want to get him far away enough? No, it will not. So that's slow crippling Sexy Bambo right now. We have another Janata come up there. We got another Janata. Level 4 Shuriken as well. Retracts him. Spend's coming in. He's going to fade into Invis. However, he's visible for long enough. It is only a level 2 Windwalk. So unfortunately. See the stun getting tossed out there by Lashrak for good measure. Looks like they will have to back off. But yeah, level 2 Windwalk still has a fair amount of fade time there. I think it's like 0 0.5, 0 0.75 there. Bought Sven enough time to get off that stun. But 3.6 thousand gold in the bank right now for Shadowfiend. Well, Gadzi, the reason they're picking up the gem, right, is you, the gem is not just in counter invisible hero. It's not just for countering invisible heroes. I mean, the reason you'll see a lot of teams pick up an early gem is not because it's an invisible hero on the other team. There may be no heroes at all. It's purely for the counter warding. And by counter warding, the team gains map control. And for a ganking lineup, like Fnatic's lineup here with the Bounty Hunter, the Nyx Assassin, the map control is incredibly important. Not only does it make it easy for them to sneak by undetected, but it just forces the opposing team to play super... Like, look at them right now. They're all cuddled up behind the tower. They're cowering, basically. They know they can't go out because they, they can't see the enemy team. They have no idea where they are. They know if they step out at any moment, they might get ganked by someone, and they might not even be invisible. Nyx might just blink on them. For you know, Nyxos might blink on them. No tower might swap them into a shitty position and get them killed. I mean, Era might jump in and just throw a Requiem in their face. They have no idea where these heroes could strike from at any given moment. This is their biggest fear. You see, like, what Freeze is doing right now. He wants to step out of the jungle, and immediately they're all over him. There we go, blinking, stun, stun, stuns everywhere. Ice path, magic missile, raise to finish things up. And an auto attack, in fact, Shakira, swap back there, skewer in though. Here comes the Magnus Oil, here's the counter attack, those stuns go out, and we will see that Aegis burned. They did overextend a little bit, Magnus managed to catch him out there, the stun goes out from Sven, ice path tossed in, good counter attack though, from the Radiant side, that's what they needed. And now it looks like Fnatic may have overextended Macropire doing absolutely nothing. Another kill taking out there. Taking out that Jakiro at Absolute Legends. They needed to counterattack. Bambo with a perfect setup there. Unfortunately, Absolute Legends. Unfortunately for Fnatic, they really didn't count on that. They probably should have been a little bit more wary about Bambo skewering them into a bad position. That's probably where they made their biggest mistake. But yeah, that game got Enigma. Perfect example of why AL need to be worried. Nyx does have a haste room bottled up right now. Vengeful Spirit has also picked up an urn of shadows. We'll see if she decides to boot up just yet or she's just be going to sit with the naked boots for a while. Sony though going to try and get some farm up on the top lane. Of course Sony does hit pretty hard now. But that said, he's probably still waiting to get that crystals. It's probably the next item on his list of things to do. Now Shadowfiend has picked up his Yasha, probably working towards that Mantis style most likely. Meanwhile Enigma also working on his BKB. Uh, looks like they might get the revenge on Bambo though. Bambo though, gonna cop the stun there from Nyx as well as that mana burn. Follow up stun there with the magic missile and an easy kill. We'll see the urn toss down there on Freezer. The Malapus go out there. A swap back though. We should have a stun coming up in a second there from Nyx. It's ready to go. Throws out the Carapace. Freezer doesn't hit it though. It cops an impale anyway. There's an easy double kill for Fnatic Raycor. See Jakiro though, with the mech there, he's finished up there, stun again on Mania, Mania getting caught up, raise one, raise two, and Nyx will finish him there, also throwing a good carapace into his face there, of course the Edict triggering that unfortunately for him, and now the mid tower push, Arrow going to clean it up nice and easy as well, now we should bring up the gold chart once again, we see a 7.5k advantage there to the Dire, oh okay Gazzy, my apologies. But a 2k experience that you see there after that fight, that's something that AL needed desperately. That experience jump after that fight, bringing it down from nearly a 5k lead down to 1k, although you see those last couple of games, so feeding them an experience once again. Now, an item just came out that's a Ghost Scepter for somebody who, though? Might be for Ven it's probably for Vengeful Spirit there, as it's sent back without delivering, and she probably wants it just to keep Sven out of her face. No, this is a best of three. This is game one, the best of three. 
Now there we go, Crystals. Sven finding his Crystals now. Gonna work towards that now. This doesn't, he's probably gonna be doing about maybe 400, 500 to swing on the crit at the moment. Nothing major, but then we've got to keep in mind that Shadowfin obviously doesn't have that much health. Of course, he's one of the squishier heroes. That said, he does, he is starting to stack up the armor though. Especially once the armor aura start kicking in. Of course, the mech will give him another plus five there or so. No tell. There we go. Deciding to build towards power treads there. Just going to bulk up a little bit. And of course, it's one of the things, of course, support heroes do need to gain a little bit of health. Just because otherwise you're a little easy to pick off. But now, Bambo has picked up a blink dagger. If anything's going to turn things around for Absolute Legends, it's going to be those Bambo setups, as we saw earlier. Bit of a miss swap from the Ventral Spirit, but at the same time, it's definitely doable. Now, with that... Uh-oh. Looks like they spotted Hanny. Hanny, though, blinking away before he gets clipped there by that scream and then teleporting to safety. Somebody's got a gem. There we go. Queen of Pain also has her own gem now. See the pressure now on the top lane. Force him to teleport back. New items for the Dire so for the Radiant side. Let's have a look. Spend nothing particularly new. Freezer still working on that BKB. Queen of Pain has her own BKB now. That'll definitely help out a little bit. At the very least, she won't get chained down the middle of a fight and may actually get her spells off for a change now we do see bounty hunter pick up the ash now this might be getting built to be honest bounty hunter doesn't really benefit hugely from the mana so it's nice as a defensive item just to get rid of dust and stuff but it's not a huge deal for him that could actually be getting built it might actually just be left as a yasha just for the movement speed that is also a potential option but mana stuff doesn't do wonders for bounty hunter i think there are better options for him just in terms of pure damage because of course attack speed doesn't do much for him when his main steroid is janata and that's obviously off timer based and now I don't know if you realize he's still visible. We'll back up there. Throws down the BKB. He's gonna try and dive in possibly, although the Nigra is there and the Noon need to be wary of that. Ice path tossed out, doesn't find anything though. So you see Magnus also skulking about there. That said though, down the bottom lane, Hanny's still farming, has picked up a ghost scepter. Of course, gonna make it harder for Sven to hit him. Shakira also with his own ghost. It looks like that goes into Wads for Shakira. Sven ulting up now, gonna get that tower push happening. Still a 10k goal lead though for the dire side. Looks like they are going to manage to bring in this tower. Looks like the Dyer are really happy to sacrifice Dyer's that tower. They said it's okay. Now we see Hanny has rotated back towards the mid lane, although he's decided not to gun for it. Our Magnus jumps inside that pit, has burned his blink. Hanny, though, going to find that double damage instead of him, so he's a skewer back to safety. No tell now, only 200 gold, so has picked up. Nothing new. Poor support here. Mania also working on... Looks like mostly wards at the moment. Smoke gank though from the Radiant Star. We'll see if they can pick anybody off. It looks like Queen of Pain is the target of the Dyer's attention though. That said, it looks like she's going to back off in time. The blink in though. It looks like they're going to pick her off. A raise one. Can we see raise two? Yes, they will. A track kill there. Requiem coming up. Although Black Hole going to cancel. Hanny also caught in it. They get the ice path down. But it looks like Era's trying to back up. A stun goes out. Skewerin. Era now in a lot of trouble. Chain stun. He gets brought down. So does Jakiro. And Queen of Pain buys back. Going to blink in after a target. No town now should be able to escape. But a two for one trade there, and they lost Queen of Pain for the Shadow Fiend. That's definitely not what they wanted. And it looks like Sven might be about to hit his stride here because he's well on his way to that Daedalus. He's only a race, pretty much about uh, maybe 1500 gold away from the Daedalus. This definitely could cause a difference here. If they can't focus down the Sven, this really needs to be Fnatic's first stop here. Either getting rid of the Enigma for the Black Hole or pick up the Sven, although they do pick up the Lashrak at least. Bounty Hunter managed to grab that one. The stun in for Hattie. Instant blink out. Look at him go there. As we see the dust up though on Trixie. Trixie gets brought down. A nice attempt for Hattie to save, but doesn't work. Double buybacks there from the die side. Looks like they're going to try and keep charging in here. Prevent them from getting that Roshan. They did, yes, they did indeed stop that dead there as it looks like they are going to bring down Freezer. Chain stun, chain ice on him as well. Down goes Freezer. And now can they find Sven Sten still running for his life. But it looks like the Dyer are going to pick up Roshan number three and of course Cheese on this one. It was looking good for the for the Radiant but unfortunately just the counter attack and again. Big dips again in the XP chart. Back up to a 5k lead though for the Dyer. 10k gold lead still. She's left on the ground. Who's going to grab it? It looks like they're going to feed it to Trixie. Trixie probably is going to ditch that poor man. She doesn't really need it anymore. Yep, there we go. Selling it off. Mm -hmm. 
Sony though. Looks like he's bought something there. Okay, bought the rest, but he's just leaving the courier there to pick up the the Demon's Edge. Now Hanny, what's his next item? He's got 3.7k in the bank. It's a lot of cash saved up. Jakira 500, Bounty Hunter 1700, and Shadow Fiend only 700 of his own. Looks like he's trying to finish that mantra at the moment. Still needs a Yasha. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Where did Nyx go? Nyx is busy rolling about. Looks like Nyx has picked up. Okay, he's grabbed up a Voidstone. This could actually be a Hex in a minute. We'll see. Or actually, that could also be his Yules. That's also another option. Meanwhile, though, Enigma trying to push out from the bottom lane. It's about 1200, 1300 gold away from his Mythal Hammer and completing that BKB. Mangson in the hand finished up his boots, going for power traces for a bit more survivability. We'll see if they can open up with any really big ults there from Magnus. Of course, that's their setup plan. Trixie, though, 2.2k in the bank. And it looks like Fnatic might be putting a bit of pressure on the top lane, or they might not. In fact, it's just getting to the point in the game where the ganking still has to start to pay off less, and they really need to start farming or pushing up. Just basically sitting down and pushing and trying to get some raxes. Don't want to wait too long. That said, though, Shadowfiend is relatively well farmed, but unfortunately Sven also hits like a truck, and he's getting that farm. The Daedalus is completed now. Those are really big crits. You're looking at 1k plus crits here. Definitely some worrisome signs here for Fnatic. They need to make sure this doesn't get out of control here. They need to focus down that spend in these fights. Any of those. 4.2 thousand gold. What is he doing with his money? We'll see. <coughs> no doubt, though. Just going to stack and then they might farm this up in a second. Let's bring up the item chart here. See a whole lot of new items amongst the teams. Mana style though completed by the Shadowfin should mention that. Actually, this could actually be a Scardi in a moment, or actually it might also be. I mean, if he's going super defensive, it could be a Lynx, but I get the feeling it might be a Scardi, because a Scardi would help him kite Sven like no tomorrow. So I think it could actually be a Scardi, actually. We'll see. But Sven definitely starting to get uh, towards his Hulk mode area. Now the push from the rating side. Looks like they go after the top tower. Maybe they'll just try and sweep the jungle and set up a gank. We'll see. A lot of pinging happening there. The radiant side looking to charge in the jungle. Trying to set some up. Sven though visible right now. And charge in there. Have a look for trouble. Not going to find anything just yet though. Meanwhile most of the rail die heroes are in the mid. Hanny, though, just going to mount her up and get ready to roll out. 4.5k. What is he doing with this money? We'll see. Bounty Hunter, though, did indeed go for a Manto. I find that interesting. Not a common item on him, either. As I, f I find it interesting that people can complain about Bounty Hunter picks when he's in sort of your know, action-oriented hero. I mean, if you really want, we can go back to the 45-minute you know, Chinese turtle tri-lane versus tri-lane farm strategies. That's also a possibility. In all honesty, I hope we never go back to the end because I really honestly did fall asleep while trying to cast those games. I love to see Bounty Hunter. I love to see heroes like Sven, Bounty Hunter, Nyx, all these really aggressive heroes that like to get stuck in. This comes down to we have a bit of a lull period here because Fnatic are finding it a little bit harder to gank Absolute Legends because they're grouping up and pushing as a team. And of course, like I said at the start, their team fight potential is scary. They're really worried about that. Nice little counter ward position there. Not spotted up by a jam, but it does, of course, provide the detection radius. Now the track's being tossed out there by Bounty Hunter. Needs to be careful. Just want to get too close. Sven can possibly throw something at him if he's not careful. Ice Path gets tossed out. Do we have a follow up here? Sure, it can get thrown out there. Going to hit Freezer. Just a little bit of harassment, though. Hanny decides not to die for it. Come with me, he's playing. It's Queen of Pain. That's come with me right there. Freezer, though, just going to keep him tracked up there. Trixie just keeping them tracked up non stop. More mana burn being tossed there. I think it's trying to lower Sven's mana pool a bit. Not going to be really that effective. They've got Arcane Boots, plus, of course, the fact is he doesn't have that much intelligence to burn off in the end. They can start hitting Queen of Pain, though, or something like that. That'll really sting. The Nibra as well, so has a fair amount of mana right now as well. Plenty Demons of tracks being tossed out still, non-stop. 
I think they get a gun for something here. There we go. Track tossed out. There's a wave of terror as well. There's a Scardi also finished. And now the blink in though from Magnus. This could be trouble here. Although Enigma getting picked off there. But they bring down Shadowfin. He'll be back up in a second. Black Hole's coming. Enigma they're going to sit the macro pod. Not the best of decisions there. We see the ult tossed in there. Swap out by Ventral Spirit. Nice save from her. Uh, we've already lost Bounty on Ventral Spirit as well. Jakiro gets dropped. And the damage right now from Sven is too insane. Plus, of course, the setup there from Bambo. Absolutely fantastic. Initiation value. Absolute legends have unleashed the card of their sleeve. And that's their team fight potential with Bambo's ult. It's all they need. Unfortunately, Shadowfiend got way too close to that. They want to be using that swap to pick off heroes, not save them. And now it looks at AL. They know the time is now. They've got a gun for this. Buyback's not available right now, I don't think. No, they are not. This looks like a Rax. They can get this done in 20 seconds. They've got the damage to do it too. And Fnatic, it was looking like a good start for them, but they're falling into their trap, which is just the team fights. The team fights for Absolute Legends are insanely good. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. See Stun tossed out there by Nyx. Not going to find anything though. Stun also thrown back by Sven. Looks like they're going to get a bit of a revenge kill there. They'll pick off Sven, but in the end, Sven just buying back. And not really caring too much. He'll be back up 2.6k in the bank as well. Has he actually spent his money yet? No, he has not. In fact, I think he spent on a buyback, actually. Nope. Nope, no buyback. Is it in the courier? Okay, there we are. It's an old dollar courier. I think he's going for a hex. Should be a hex there. Yep, there we go. Hanny's decided to pick up a hex. Now that might help him a bit there, but that said, Sven, of course, does have a BKB down to seven seconds charge. I get the feeling they may regret this blink. It's just not doing. Like the Shadowfin Bull Run is just not doing enough damage to keep toe to toe. It's really nice. It's got a lot of utility. The slow is nice for kiting. The blink is good for mobility. But the issue is in this late game, he just needs some raw damage to go toe to toe with, well, basically Mr. Crit here. And if he gets stunned from his absolute carnage is unleashed. That said, though, of course, it is giving him a nice amount of health, which is always a consideration. But that said, the setup right now is the fact he's just getting blasted down by these cleaves while they're stuck inside the black hole. Or even just the Magnus ult was pretty much the setup for that first fight there, allowing them to burn through that Aegis. So Fnatic are reconsidering. They're reconsidering pushing right now. They're a little bit worried, of course, that ult there from Bambo. It looks like Hanny, though. It's about to get picked up again, and there we go. Giving away his gem. They should have another one up and ready to buy if they want it, though. Plus plenty of spare cash. They are, in fact, just going to leave that there for the crew. It's probably going to come up and snag that in a second as a backup gem for them. Queen of Pain still got hers. They might have palmed off. They've palmed off the gem to Magnus. And we're managed to get a, just going to do a little bit of counter warding as well. But things definitely getting rough for Fnatic. The down racks down. Of course, they're losing map control as well. Definitely becoming an issue. Bounty Hunter also died during that fight without getting a chance to pop his cheese. He just got cleaned up so quickly by Magnus. Set up there from his ult. Just way too strong. But here we go. They're going to make a second run on mid. They've killed the tower. The ice path tossed out. Doesn't hit anything. The blink in there from Magnus. Tries to skew them backwards. Decides not to go for the ult initially. Nobody close enough. Sven now ulting up. Has got BKB ready if they need to. They do need to get rid of the Sven though at the start of the fight if they can. Also Magnus still a big issue though. Sven decided not to BKB just yet. Decides to hold on. Gonna get healed up. No, not gonna heal it. He walks straight back in the macro fight. Doesn't matter though. They get the Rax down. It's gonna get denied but not a big deal there as it looks like. A blink in there from Magnus throws his ult. Did he cancel? He cancelled in time there. We'll manage to save it, although we'll get picked off here. That's what they needed. But they've already lost the Rax is the big issue. No town now moving in. The stun in there from Hanny. Gonna clean up Mania. Mania now followed up there with the other stun there from Jakiro. And now the Warcry there for Sven. Sven gonna hightail it out if he can. Also, we've got Enigma also running for his life. Has got a BKB. Did the stun get tossed out there on Trixie. Trixie though gonna Malphus it off. Retracts him. And now trouble for Enigma, though. He's gonna BKB and teleport out. Not going to be any issues getting out there. See the swap thrown in from Motown just because he can. And now it looks like Absolute Legends are getting ready to push the bottom lane. Looks like Sven going for Assault now as well. 
Roshan going to get cleaned up by Fnatic. And Fnatic, though, definitely in a bit of a bind here. They've got to try and pick up this Magnus or this Sven at the start of the fight, and they're struggling to do so, and they've still got to try and keep their swap around to deal with Enigma. Always trouble there, but they will bring down the fourth Roshan here. Going to get another cheese as well. Going to give this one to Nyx. I guess they've decided Bounty Hunter does not live long enough to really... Actually, no, Bounty Hunter still has here. Still has not popped it. So never mind. Got multiple cheeses. This is still game one, yes. Absolute Legends are mounting a counter-attack now. See the gold chart drop back a bit. 10k deficit now. See a 10k experience deficit as well. Ready? Not doing so hot on paper, but in practice right now, they do have the upper hand. I need a gem drop from the floor somewhere. Angel Spirit now just trying to get those wards back up, get some semblance of map control back on the board. So they are going to pass the cheese off to the courier. Shadow Fiend though, 4k in the bank, just needs some raw damage right now to help him get up to speed with the Sven. He's got the kind, he's got the utility, he's got the health, just doesn't have the raw damage right now that the Sven is dishing out. Now the push on the bottom rack, so it looks like Absolute Legends aren't going to give them any time here. The cleave while you cleave Sven is going to tear through this tower. We see Bambo, no, he's the linchpin here, just getting into good position there. Going up, getting ready to jump over, and they decides not to. Now they're going to, are they going to keep pushing or are they going to head back? about it. It's getting ready to go. He's just waiting for the push up a little bit. Meanwhile, Trixie isn't there, of course. Now, Bo, though, still trying to maneuver into position right now. Fnatic need to be careful. The Hex goes down. Freezer, here comes Bambo. There we go. Throws in the old. Going to catch two of them there. Will we have the bomb? Stun from Sven jumps in with his blink. Going to set up. They bring down both the Venture Spirit and the Nyx. Shadowfiend running for his life. Trying to get away. Will manage to back off successfully. In fact, Error going to charge back in. A question of his choice. Error now. Trixie now takes the edge. Hops the cheese there. Shadowfiend with a Requiem. Gets brought down. He'll be back up in a second, though. They bring down Queen of Pain in return. The tower is still standing. Counterattack on Sven. He's coming and throws out his own stun there, Stormbolt, but he's slowed there by the Scotty. He might actually get away in the end. Track gets tossed down. They bring down the Shrek. And a blink out there from Sven. He should be able to escape. It's like trick. It looks like Error unable to run down there, but at the very least, they do hold that tower. Of course, they do have to spend both the Cheese and an Aegis to do it. See, multiple gems dropped to the ground there. It looks like Shadowfiend has actually managed to find Sven. Sven actually in a lot of trouble. Race gets tossed out, and Sven gets brought down. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Buyback there from Sven. We've got to keep in mind the blink initiation value from the Radiant team right now is just a lot stronger. They've got to watch out for Enigma, Sven, Magnus. All these blinking stun is really scary stuff. Nyx decides to recover a gem there. Sven though has finished his assault curious now. He's got a ton of armor. It's going to help ward off that enhanced damage there from the Nenigam armor. On the other hand though... There is a lot still regard. Oh, actually, no, with the Warcry, actually, he should be able to fend off that negative armor fairly easily. See the blink over there. Just looking for something to farm. Meanwhile, it looks like AL going to put the pressure on mid again. Mania, though, has picked his own ghost stepped up. <clears throat> looks like Queen of Pain trying to build herself a late Arganims. Interesting choice, but it looks like she'll be going for that regardless. Should have it fairly soon. Smoke up there for on the radiant side. They're going to look for another gank here. They should be able to find it too. Come with Mer. Try not to get too far ahead of his own team. Of course, he walks face forward to a bunch of stunts. He will regret it. 
He's waiting for someone to try and farm mid, and they'll plan to descend upon them and then try and get one of these Raxes. There we go, the blink in, although too slow. The BKB gets popped there by Trixie, just too fast. Hex gets thrown out of Sony. As you the blink in there, great time though, jumps back. Everybody's scattering, trying to get by Skewer gets tossed in. Magnus is throwing himself, catching only the Twin Ender Dragon. Twin Ender Dragon mechs up, backs up. Not fast enough though, and they get their pick off. But of course, this is only Twin Ender Dragon, he's got cash. Oh, she doesn't have enough time for a buyback. It's on cooldown. And Nick's looking for an angle here. <clears throat> Might struggle to find it though. Sven ulting up, gonna give chase. Big crits there on Bounty Hunter losing half his health. Also, no, the wow, swap out there. As it looks like he's hitting stuns throwing fours there now. Oh my god, look at that cleave! Absolutely insane. Vengeful Spirit gets wrecked by a cleave and a crit there. So it looks like we'll also see Anima get taken out though at the same time. Bounty Hunter is still trying to trade his race. He's getting tossed out there by Shadowfin. Shadowfin 3.9k in the bank. Stun gets tossed out by Spent. Only the Copper Carabas in the base though. As looks he's going to try and back off. Gets hit by an Impal. Likely to get brought down here. There's a Mana Burn as well. Bounty Hunter will help finish him. A buyback though from Magnus. Now the counter attack here from the dice side. Can they make it stick? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. In all honesty, it doesn't really, really look like it. They've got two heroes, or four heroes up, but most of them are not here in the mid lane right now. They just started moving out. Then Enigma's probably going to be up. That's an Enigma. Did not find room for a black hole that last fight. Good reaction times from the people who blinked away from him. Magnus only caught one hero. That's the other big difference as well. Only caught a single hero. See, Gondar has decided to go with a Stygian Desolator as well. push on mid. They do have Sven down for 30 seconds. Maybe this is the time that they need to get through here. I'm just looking at Magnus. Magnus has all the 400 gold in the bank as well. Is he getting shipped out? Okay, it's just a smoke. Never mind. Goal right on Sven though, catching up rapidly to Shadowfin. Shadowfin though, 613, still doing quite well for himself. Travel also picked up by Shadowfin. This might be the right, well, might be their only real option here. It's just mobility, using mobility, abusing that to try and push. Although that said, I'm missing a couple of racks, which is going to make things slow going. So about to note no gem anymore on these die on these raiding heroes. Uh, Nick's gonna keep scouting things up. Bounty Hunter also here. Shadowfin though picking up his own Daedalus. Crystallis being picked up there. So Shadowfin on his way, just picking up some damage items. This will definitely help out. The situation quite a bit. There we go. Daedalus completed on the Shadow Fiend. His buyback is still in cooldown, so we just need to save for it. Pushes on though. They're going to try and bring down this bottom tower. Maybe they can get this in the sweep. It'll be pretty much GG if they get those megas. That's it. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get it right now. Now, Jakira needs to be careful, might get picked out if he's a little bit too aggressive because the blinkers on the raiding side are definitely quite scary. Speaking of which, the raiding side backing up here, and Trixie needs to be careful, he doesn't walk head first in this and just checking for gems. Queen of Pain does indeed have a gem there. Yeah, they're going to find himself a free Radiant courier. They're going to pick that off. Killed. Haste. Two, three point two k in the bank there for Spenders. If a buyback, he does indeed have a buyback ready. A 
Houdini holds up there. The swap back on Mania. They get their hex down as well. Gonna throw out some noobs to stun as well. Easy pick up there, of course. He goes to himself up. Very easy kill. Some instantaneous buyback though. And a return to form. And he will head back out. There's a swap burn though for a good 30 seconds here on no count. Um, the Iron Long Conversions here as well. Roshan's back up, but these heroes looking for an opportunity to blink in and cause some help in the mid lane. In fact, Hanny about to blink into that there, gets caught out. Shockwave gets sent through there. Is Hanny going to get right his Carapace? Managed to stun several people there. In fact, a lot of people managed to cop themselves on that Carapace. A swap out there for no tail. Nice save on Hanny. Hanny going to back up as well. As it looks like now, Queen of Pain going to walk into this. We see Wave of Terror. Stun gets tossed out there. We see the crits getting tossed out on Queen of Pain as well. Looks at the Black Holster and Error's been caught out by it. And there we go, Aero brought down, and does he have a buyback? I don't think he does. This is definitely going to be trouble here for Fnatic. They're going to bring down the bounty on one more hit, although Danny's back in the mix there. Throws out the oh, mana burn there, picks off the Enigma, as you see a stun tossed out there on Sony as well. And he's also brought low, but the target they're after, of course, is Sven Impale going to strike good there, as it looks like now he's tracked up as well. Nowhere, really, nowhere to run, getting it cleaned up. Magnus buying back though, Sven also buying back Jim on the ground as well. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Annie though, 2.9k in the bank, possibly just going to save for buybacks. The Eventual Spirit also probably going to keep her cash on. On uh, hand for buyback, so has picked up a Vladimir's offering, just checking the Radiant side as well for anything interesting. Not really. The Dire side is going to charge here and try and take this one at the moment. Sven now blinks in, they're just going to make a run on the throne. Glyph gets popped though. Ice Path thrown at Hexer on Sony. Can they bring him down? It doesn't look like they managed to catch him. Now he's going to stand inside of Macfire. Doesn't really care. Shockwave tossed out, but they're going to get the throne here. They just decide to race for it, and they get it. Shadow Fiend still down. An easy kill for them. GG indeed. Absolute legends. A shockingly terrible start there. As you can see, oh well, no difference he got. I think it ended on a 12k deficit regardless though. Absolute legends bring that one back, and it just came down to the coordination in the team fights. It was just a lot stronger there. And of course, the setups from Bambo were absolutely excellent. But guys, watching that was game one, though. Just game one. We'll have game two on the way. We'll see if Fnatic can basically score an equalizer.